Hello, everyone, and welcome to AEW Dark. I am Excalibur, joined, as always, by the human suplex machine, Taz. And Taz, we will see Team Taz in action coming up later on tonight. Is everything OK? Everything is fine and dandy, onward and upward. Team Taz in full effect, as you said, Excalibur, in this episode. Well, we shall see. Let's not delay any further and throw it down to our colleague, Justin Roberts, standing by inside the ring. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Buffalo, New York, at a combined weight of 501 pounds, The Butcher and The Blade. The latest acquisitions for the Hardy family office Butcher, The Blade, and The Bunny. They are absolute mercenaries. They will do anything for money. Oh, look oh, at this! Yeah. Yeah, Matt Hardy's got to be so happy to have Butcher, Blade, and Bunny part of his family. It's uh, very impressive. I've always been ultra impressed with Butcher and Blade and Bunny. Not even allowing milk chocolate. Randy Summers oh. and Brandon Watts to get their entrance. That is Randy Summers in the ring with Butcher, who is getting absolutely manhandled. Butcher, oh, actually, Randy Summers coming in with some uh, South four forearms yes. right there. Signs of life there. Swings and misses there by Big Butch. Bringing those left hands, that, that left forearm. Well, nice. Miss of a drop kick, though. He almost got it. Anthony Butcher. Oh! Deceptively oh, fast. Buddy. Wow. The power we know about, oh. but, but his quickness. Yeah, he's, he's, he's very much a modern day athlete. Big, strong, quick, fast, powerful. He can do it all. He's now tagging in Blade. Just as impressive as Butcher. Oh! oh. oh. And is nasty. They're two big, bad, nasty men, and I love it. So this guy Summers has got to tag out. He is getting his ass whooped right now. I mean, he's got to just <laughs> yeah, just right. get out of there. Brandon Watts. Brandon Watts not backing down though. Well, wants to go toe to toe with Blade. That's a bad move. And the toe of Blade's boot into the midsection of Watts. Blade just teeing off. He's picking his, his shots left and right here. That's Blade, man. He is so systematic, so violent, so intense. And the, you know, we, we've, we're used to seeing the aggression from Butcher and Blade, but since joining the Hardy family office, it seems like it's ratcheted up. I agree. I totally agree, and I think Matt Hardy probably loves it. Why wouldn't he? Hardy whipping to the ropes, reversed. Watts elevates over the top, chop to the chest. Two consecutive chops. Ooh, box oh. the ears right there. That was that was well done by Watts. Looking to upset the equilibrium of Blade. You can see Blade, one. yeah. That pause does. Oh! Private party intervening as Watts was headed to the corner. Now Watts going up top. And oh, look at this, Matt Hardy. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Well done by Matt Hardy. Just dropped Watts face first. And now he's claiming he was attacked. Oh, no, Watts attacked, Watts attacked Matt Hardy. I saw it. Did you see it, Taz? It looked like he kind of maybe did something when he fell on his table. Maybe his knee hit his part of his Dynaflow. Maybe, yes. This, I can't believe we're watching the same match. This is absurd. Butcher. Let's take a look here. This will clear everything up. Oh, Matt Hardy, yeah. Well, eh, maybe not. So, so what you're saying, Anthony, is that is that Watts oh. went for a diving body press on Matt Hardy. I think I saw a cheeky knee in his esophagus okay. as he fell down, so. Bad darts, uh, what's he called? Brandon Watts. Watts. Bad Watts. darts, yes. Mr. Watts, bad darts indeed. Now Watts is even in more grave danger because now he's dealing with the Butcher after just dealing with the Blade and Matt Hardy. And you saw how Butcher was pulling up on that bottom rope to create more downward pressure for that knee across the throat of Watts. Well, I did like, I like how uh, all of Matt Hardy's family came to his aid then when he was in, in playing. That shows right. how much respect they have for the, the legend of Matt Hardy. That's, and that's how it should be. That's teamwork, it's cohesiveness. And you know, Matt Hardy has to be happy that we're nearing the end of the month, that the first quarter is finally over because that means he will uh, be no longer contributing to that Hangman Page Whiskey Fund. I'm sure he buys other things. Yeah, sure. Bourbon whiskey, just straight whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Scotch whiskey. Scotch whiskey. Canadian whiskey. Canadian whiskey is very good, actually. Yeah. Oh! Oh! I like mine more Kentucky barrel, but I digress. 
bottled in bond. Yes. I like the one with the red gimmick on without getting to names. So. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, Blade oh. just gouging at the eyes. Brandon Watts. Yeah, Watts. He wants to get over. Tag his partner, but there's no way because you know, Blade pulled him over into his corner. Veteran, veteran move by a veteran himself, Blade. Now Butcher all over Watts. I love how um, Butcher and the Blade, they're, they're masters of controlling the pace of a match. You know, they um, absolutely they, they up the pace when they want up the pace and they slow it down like now when they want to slow it down. This is it's masterful wrestling. Oh, jawbreaker there. Butcher staggered a little bit, kick to the knee. Watts makes the tag out to Randy Summers. That was smart by Watts to tag Summers in real quick. But even smarter there by Butcher, who immediately made the tag out to Blade. And look at this, Summers. Moving with a sense of urgency here. Yeah, hey, that's smart to do, but uh oh Whoa, watch out. Swing and a miss by Blade. Kick to the midsection. Summers. Oh! What's a fisherman's neck breaker there? Like a twisting, yeah, a little bit of a twisting fisherman buster. Per se, and he tags out to Watts. The Watts, I'm not sure he's got to he, get he, some control. He's got no control of himself right now. He's all over. Yeah, Watts not not recovered from that that onslaught from Butcher and the Blade. Blade, oh, swinging a miss. Ooh. Shot to the back of the head. Pump kick, thrust kick. Enzikiri, Blade on roller skates here. Wow, what the heck's going on here? And Bunny, look at this. Bunny getting in Bryce Rensburg's face. Ooh. Butcher just trucked both members of Milk Chocolate. And yeah, that little bit of a distraction right there by the bunny was enough to shut down. And Watson I think Summers, oh Butcher and Blade ready to drag the lake. They hit it, and it is elementary from here. The Butcher and the Blade. Anthony, an impressive, impressive performance by Butcher and Blade. That was a great performance, and Taz, Taz hit the nail on the head. All it takes is a couple of seconds for, a, for an elite supreme athlete to get their bearings again. Blade was on, he was on the city street, had a couple of seconds, and he's back, and, and they won the match. Great performance from, from Butcher and Blade. And I was talking about the cohesiveness of this group, and, and as far as the whole family, Matt Hardy, I mean, it's just, it's cohesiveness, and that's so important. We saw him right there with Butcher and Blade and Bunny. The Hardy family office is looking impressive here tonight on AEW Dark. Well, check this out. We have women's action coming up right now. Jasmine Alora collides with Matty Rinkowski. And don't forget, Taz, Leva Bates joining us on commentary. Yeah. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Calabasas, California, Matty Rinkowski. Taz, we've had a few looks at Maddie Rinkowski lately. She's looked impressive, but nobody has had a better look at Maddie than the person joining us here on commentary, Leva Bates. And Leva will get to you in a second as soon as Justin Roberts does his business. Her opponent from Orlando, Florida, Jasmine Allure. That's what we call a transition, Taz. Leva, anyway, you've <laughs> had a lot of good looks at Maddie Rinkowski as of late. What brings you to the booth here on Dark? Well, actually, Maddie brings me to the, to the booth, actually. Uh, I see that she's wearing new gear. I hate it. Really? Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. That's so. a very strong take. Is it the yeah. burgundy and gold? <laughs> or is it the one legged it's, gimmick? What it's, is it? it's, uh, all right. So Michael Jackson oh. can pull off the one glove, but That's come on, the one leg? Where's uh, the functionality of that? Well, high fashion? I think it's a high fashion thing. I think probably. it's more like high BS. Oh, wow. Wow. The baits. I mean, so, wow. I mean, I might be a little salty because she has hit me not once, but twice with a book. Mm. Oh, and if you notice, Frankie, the ref, is still out there. Frank he was Gassino, the ref. That, that's Frank he was Gassino. the ref for both of our matches, okay. and somehow blindly, and did not notice that I got hit the book. So I kind of, I kind of have a little bit of salt, a little bit of both of them. Oh. Well, you come out here to just vent. Uh, we, we appreciate. <laughs> I mean, Jones. I'm, I'm here to put <laughs> my perspective. <laughs> oh, oh Jasmine, match. Everyone. Jasmine like, Allure. Like, look at Jasmine Allure. Look how. How athletic. Athletic. She's an up and comer. Right. She's bright. She's spunky. She's adorable. Yeah, she's a she's all a things I, all I, things people would say about Taz. Yeah. <laughs> very much so. Especially spunky. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> spunky. Reverse. Whoa. Back elbow there by Maddie Rankowski. Rankowski finding herself back in the driver's seat here. But Levy, you, you, you gotta give a little credit here to Maddie. She is a she's been so talented I and mean, so uh, excellent in her outings to the point X Cobb made at the top of the match. 
Uh, she has been rolling pretty pretty strongly, not just in this match, but in the past, recent past here in AW. All right, I'll give it to her. You got to give her a little credit, though, right? Oh, look Ooh. at Maddie there, Ooh. Eva. I mean, look at how strong that clothesline was. I'll give it to I'll give her credit. She she is an incredible talent when she lets herself be a talent. Mm. But she's too busy taking the cheap route. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't I, agree with people. Too I either, don't right? want to repeat. Hiro Jones over here. Oh, that's <laughs> me. Jawbreaker there, Renkowski. Oh, Maddie, little definitely. rattled. Yeah. There she goes. All right. And this Jasmine. Yeah, this is an Jack. opportunity for Jasmine Allure. She's still seeking her first victory here in AEW. Oh, kick to the rib cage. Well, the point that Leva you were making about you know Jasmine, she's she's definitely uh, high motor, high energy for a young spunky athlete, as you said. So now we're seeing that right now out of Jasmine. I, I'm feeling a lot of alliteration, spunky, sparky. Yes, that's what we. That's what that's Sparkle. what commentary is. It's a bunch of adjectives and alliteration. You're a librarian. You should know that. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine Allure delivering some aggressive right hands and right elbow drop right hooks the near leg, but only a two count from referee Frank Gasnow. A little, she's perplexed. Is Jasmine oh, a tad frustrated? That that is a little bit of frustration. I feel that. I feel that in my soul. You can hear it. Just scream. Primal Screen Jones. Here we go. Watch out. What? 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 Oh. 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 Renkowski tried to get a step ahead of Jasmine, but Jasmine countered. Hooks the far leg to I like count. To call, I like to call that move psych. <laughs> uh, I, I, that definitely is catchy. Trademark. <laughs> uh, yeah, trademark. Wrote it down. I, I smell a T-shirt, Leva. That, that's that's <laughs> definitely. <laughs> uh, oh, thanks, Taz. It's brand new. Yes. <laughs> I smell the starch. Oh. Oh, oh, speaking of starch. Oh, look just, at that drop kick. <sighs> Jasmine Allure in that, trouble that is here. one thing Jasmine, uh, Maddie does do well, hit you hard. Yeah, she, Whether it's with her fist, she, right. her kick, or a book. She's physical. She's definitely physical. And yet, obviously, the, the book is definitely has pissed you off, pardon my expression. Side slam there by Renkowski. I mean, imagine someone turning your children against you. How does that feel, Taz? <laughs> well, my son <laughs> is never have, my, oh! my kids are straight oh! heels, so that's a whole nother story. But anyway, Maddie with that. Ax, ax kick across the spine, and that is it, Renkowski victorious. That was she impressive. Calls, she calls that the reality check. The winner of this match, Maddie But let's Renkowski. be honest, who needs a reality check here? Maddie Renkowski. Well, that's a new real reality check. Maddie Renkowski picking up her third victory here tonight on AEW Dark. She's looked impressive, much to the chagrin of the librarian, Leva Bates. And Leva, let's take another look at the end of this Ooh. match. That axe kick across the spine was the end of the night for Jasmine Allure. Showed a lot of athleticism. I'll play the part of Leva. Showed a lot of athleticism there. And the pride of Calabasas, victorious. Like Wearing Trojan's colors. She's eye. That's right. She's I. UFC Trojans. She's no Lisa Bates. Luther and Serpentico Chaos Project in tag team action coming up next. Don't go anywhere. This is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 430 pounds, Luther Serpentico Chaos Project. Chaos Project returning to action here on AEW Dark, one of the more unique tag teams in our absolutely stacked division. And uh, taking a page out of the Team Taz playbook with this entrance here. <laughs> yeah. Same but different. <laughs> but yeah, so Chaos Project uh, definitely uh, tough to prepare for. Their opponents had a combined weight of 432 pounds, a team of Dean Alexander and Justin Law. Justin Law, Dean Alexander making their tag team debut here tonight on Dark. Anthony, two men that uh, I understand you're a little, a little acquainted with. Yeah, I know both guys quite well. Uh, two young, hungry guys. They're looking to make a big impression. Oh, oh my oh, God. Oh. Watch out. Luther just sending Serpentico. Alexander just got nailed by a flying Serpentico. And Justin Law coming in off the back of Luther here. But Luther with the back elbow dropping Justin Law. 
Nothing fancy about a good old fashioned back elbow. Always works. Not always, but most of the time. And Anthony, Ooh. we were talking about how well you know these two men, but you know, when, when you get a team coming out hot out of the gates like Chaos Project, it's impossible to prepare for. Yeah, I mean, like, like you know, Taz said a minute ago, it's impossible to, to prepare. prepare for yeah. a tag team like these two lunatics. You know, they'll do anything. Un unpredictable, Anthony. They're very unpredictable. Yep. You know, that's what it is. And they got spaghetti string hanging from their head, their legs. <laughs> it's a mess. Referee uh, Paul Turner, spaghetti squash. I was called the result. The result. <laughs> we won't get into that. <laughs> the BB alias. <laughs> anyway, I digress. <laughs> Look at Sir Pentacle bringing it. Nice right hand there from yeah. Pentacle. Quick, right? Very quick. Well, Law elevates up and over the Whoa. top. Big hip toss. Good job by Law. Nice arm drag there, real deep. Arm drag didn't hold on to it though, but did. Pick up Sir Pentacle. Big scoop and a slam. Covers lateral press with the far leg. No, oh, oh. oh, that's a lot of mass coming down on Serpentico oh, inadvertently. A lot it, of mass. Big old boy is uh, is Luther. Big Luther, old boy, yeah, big thick, raw bone guy for sure. Law, Law is really bringing it, huh? Yeah, throwing some right hands, peppering Serpentico. Anthony, I feel like he's wearing boxing boots. Help me with that. I think yeah. Law, he is right, isn't he? Yes, have a look. Uh, Take a look at that. I think he's wearing boxing boots. Maybe something close to that. Well, we're going to. Well, Luther <laughs> wants to boot take off. his boot and beat him with it. I'm only and, saying that. Oh! Because boxers, oh, as you know, Anthony, boxers normally keep their laces out, where pro wrestlers, their laces are tough. Of course, in. yep, they do. They do. A little inside stuff for you people out there watching on YouTube. You people. They're right. called fans, Ted. Right. <laughs> Watch out. Look at that. Oh! Yeah. Head first goes law. To the cold, hard concrete. Mm -mm -mm. Very rough landing for Justin Law. Dean Alexander still has not seen his first legal action of this match. So great, uh, great strategy here being shown by Chaos Project. Oh, you're right, Excalibur. Just single out Law. Just single out the one cat and just beat up on him. And Ooh. Dean Alexander has no choice but to sit on the apron and wait on. I'm not sure if you're Dean. You want to get in this thing. See the way Justin Law's uh, the oh. back of his head snapped against that canvas then. Mm. Nasty. Luther just screeched oh, that he's going no. for the Luther bomb. And oh! <laughs> Not pretty, but effective. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not at all, Taz. Well, oh, I, I don't know. I could add on to that. <laughs> I'm going to put fake eyelashes on the Mona Lisa. Hey, listen. Sir Pentico comes in over the top with a double stomp to the chest. Oh, Sir Pentico's crushing Law. Yeah, Justin Law's really chest. grinding it in with the heels of the boots. Justin Law, oh man. This is a really, really professional performance thus far from um, Chaos Projects. Yeah, they've done a massive job of just singling out one man on that other team. Oh, now what are they going to uh -oh. do? Sir Pentico. Oh, oh, oh. oh, it's right through him through oh. the rope. Oh, what a needle of face. That knee strike was ugly. Double underhooks. A little butterfly suplex here. Luther floats over. Lateral press. Two count there for Justin Law. He's um, deceptively fast for uh, for a big man, Luther. Well, he is. You know what he does well? It's because it's all his years of experience. He knows corners of the ring, positioning in the ring, which makes him appear even quicker. And, and really, it's it's about the economy of movement. He yeah, knows when it. he has to explode. Correct. Well, look and at this. Rocket launcher Jones. Oh, oh maybe not. Oh. Whoa, whoa. Through his own partner, but the pool was empty. And now Justin Law with an opportunity. Yes, Ooh. makes the roll, makes the tag. Big Dean Alexander. Here we go. Alexander. Oh, watch. Close line. Takes down Serpentico and Luther. Back elbow there. Dean Alexander. Knocking, Sir, knocking Luther back to the corner. Big back body drop sends Serpentico over the top. Drop oh, nice drop kick there by Alexander. Dean Alexander was really champing at the bit on the outside to get into Ooh. this match. Serpentico just shut him down with that super kick to the gut. Reversal here, Cazadora by Serpentico. Uh oh. Alexander caught and Ooh. brought him down. Half Nelson slam to. Oh! Luther with that drop kick. Now, oh, interesting uh, little tidbit. Dean Alexander and I actually have something in common. Yep. You, yep. Know, you know what it is. Um, I, I brought it to your attention, Taz. Oh, sorry. <laughs> too, many, too many chair shots. Sorry, bro. Railroad Jones. All right. Both, uh, you both speak uh, five languages, isn't yes, it? We've actually had, <laughs> we actually had a conversation about railroad work. We have. You know, oh, oh! Maybe not now. I mean, you might be wanting to talk to a dentist, Dean Alexander. <laughs> Big high boot in the face. Listen, if anybody could appreciate Punchy, 
Okay, it's you, Anthony. You understand that. I understand that. So. <laughs> you and Mike have the same conversation yeah. six days in a week. <laughs> and Chaos Project with that <laughs> creeping death. Serpentico covers one, two, three. The winners of this match, Chaos Project. Chaos Project making Dean Alexander yes. wish he's still at the old gig at Norfolk Southern. <laughs> Working in the single department. Anyway, Chaos Project dominant again, man. They just check this out right here. A creeping death. That creeping death. That combination Meteora spine buster there. So brutal. I think that was, um, in my opinion, that was the best performance from Chaos Project they've had this year. And really Anthony, impressed. Anthony, I agree. And if you notice, they did a lot less of those double team moves at Serpentico's expense. And I think that could be their key to success. Well, check this out. Clash of Styles, TH2s, and Helico goes one-on-one -on -one against Sunny Kiss, and that is next. TH2. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Making his way to the ring from Johannesburg, South Africa, weighing 205 pounds on Helico. And Helico representing TH2 here tonight, but in singles action. Taz, we've actually seen a lot of uh, singles appearances out of TH2 recently, and they look pretty good. Yeah, well, I mean, both men, you know, obviously very well accomplished, you know, big time pro wrestlers. So that doesn't shock me, you know, but uh, to your point, though, they've been working as a team for so long, but yet in singles, they're still looking sharp as a pack. Jack Evans looked great last night on elevation, though. Jungle Boy was able to pull out the victory at the last minute. Can Angelico do better than his partner here tonight? And his opponent from Jersey City, New Jersey, weighing 188 pounds, the Concrete Rose, Sunny Kiss. That ass is the best. All right, let the driver go to take it down. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. I have to tell you, Excalibur, the way you change your voice, it's really, really impressive. I, I, mean, I don't I've, know how you do that. I've worked on doing that that uh, horrible Jersey accent for so long. <laughs> Joey Janela's lucky Anthony didn't knock his block off. That would have been hilarious. Yeah. Oh, God, that would have been actually Can Anthony, we do that? Can we just do well, that Anthony is actually, I've never seen, seen you quite a... Uh, traumatized? <laughs> quite as traumatized, yes. But let's, uh, let's put that all behind us and allow this match to get underway. And Helico and Sunny Kiss going one on one here tonight. And Helico, of course, great resume as a Mexican submission specialist, employing that Yave style Mexican yeah. submission wrestling test. Like I was saying, you know, earlier, you know, um, just a total clash of styles here. Now, nice hammerlock by Sunny Kiss, but, you know, it, really is a, a different type of style. You know, Sonny Kiss you know, basically has more of a gymnastics type of style, highly athletic. When you're saying that, that Rivera style, that Mexican style, that lucha style of Angelico, it's a big clash. Yeah, and they say in boxing, styles make fights, and I'm, yes. I'm intrigued by this one. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this, this matchup. Ooh, oh, wow, look at that. As soon as Sonny was about to explode out, Angelico, just that, that pawing boot to the face, stopped Sonny in his tracks, but Sonny, Able to take control of the wrist of Angelico. Yeah, and Helico's got a big height advantage on Sonny, man. That's smart. That's a good way with that two-on-one wrist lock to get your opponent down a bit. But it didn't, didn't last for too long. And look at that. Just with a single single hand on the, the back of Sonny's elbow. And Helico's able to take control, but Sonny going for an ankle lock very, very aggressively right there. And could have even turned it into a heel hook from that same position, but no, you're right, but I think Sonny just sent the message to Angelico. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try and go hole for hole with you. Let's go. Sonny's extremely strong. Yeah. He's extremely yeah. strong, very powerful. Um, that's, I think that's quite underrated, his power yeah. in, the, in this division. And Sonny, no slouch in the technical department either. You know, it's true. Very true. It, it could, could be that Angelico underestimated Sonny coming into this match. Looking for a straight jacket here, perhaps. Yeah, oh, look. Uh, oh, no, he, he was not. I thought he was going straight jacket, too. Look at this. Wow. Jeez. I mean, the way he's got that arm barred while he's got the other arm trapped and he let go of it. Man, that was impressive. Into a side headlock. That is the influence of Negro Navarro, one of the great submission maestros. 
Might be a good time for Sonny. Sorry to to I was in here like a back suplex. Just a standing switch, a little drop step, shoots a half, and then ooh. just a toe kick to the midsection. Nothing fancy about that, but you can see pinpoint accuracy dropping Sonny down to his knees. So what happens when he hits that half Nelson from standing? He takes his hand, you can't tell, and pushes Sonny around to spin. That's what you do with that half standing half Nelson. Yeah, guides the head That's out right. to exactly where he wants him. Oh, but a deep, deep arm drag there by Sonny. That's the power you're talking about, Anthony. That's beautiful arm drag. Beautiful. And Sonny splits out, takes Angelico down once again. Agility, oh, the, no. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Goes back into the Tierras and takes Angelico down. Angelico, a little bit dizzy here as Sonny regains control of this match. Angelico kind of <laughs> don't know what hit him. Oh, dropped old there. And Jack Evans with a kick to the face, the referee. Mike Posey was distracted there by Angelico. Joey Janela coming after Jack Evans on the floor. If only Joey was as quick to get Jack Evans as he was to get my headset a moment ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a boxer never forgets. <laughs> well, actually, you know what we do sometimes. <laughs> All the headshots. And the knee of Sonny has been ice. Oh. Just tremendous. Just basically split the legs right here. And, and Sonny, no stranger to the splits, but look at how the, the ankle and the, the the knee are being torqued. The right ankle and the left knee of Sonny Kiss. Just uh, just amazing mat work by Angelico. Really uh, one of the best in the world. I mean, I, I feel as underrated as, as, as good as he can just go on the mat. Credit to Sonny's flexibility there because most oh. rest of there are tapping out. Oh, for, for well, sure. You, you're right. There's no doubt about that, Anthony. I mean, and flexibility brings strength. So you pointed out earlier how Sonny has so much power, and it's a, a bulk of that is because of the flexibility. Right hands to the midsection there. Sonny trying to break free of the grip of Angelico, oh. and there's that power. Yep. That's sh that strong base. The Oh, oh, that, the axe kicked it, yeah. Blocked. And Helico. Like an inverted, almost. An, <laughs> it's just, it's wow. a single leg crab with Sonny. Inverted, though, yeah. It's crazy. I never seen Sonny. With a handstand to keep the and pressure off. Yeah, but if, if Sonny drops, it's going to fall on his head. Yeah. So Sonny almost has to hold on to that handstand, and then Helico just a PK. And Helico putting on an absolute clinic here. Lateral press. Just a two count. And Anthony, this is where the resilience of Sonny Kiss will be tested. Yeah, tough, tough boy, really tough boy. I think Angelico, he, he's a nightmare to compete against because there's nobody like him, not just in AEW, but in the whole world. He's so adept at, at the technician. Oh, step up. Work on Rana there. Sonny creates a little bit of distance. Oh. Explodes with that drop salt. That drop salt, Sonny makes it look easy. It's hard <laughs> to do that move. Back handspring elbow, and the bulldog oh. landed on Helico. And that was huge. Hook of the far leg and Helico, though, kicking out. And you know, you talked about the, the style, the style of Helico making him a difficult matchup. How do you prepare for an athlete like Sonny, though? Exactly, so unique. That's why this match is such a fascinating match, because it's so unique between two really <laughs> unique individuals. <laughs> Back elbows. Hammering into the jaw of Sonny. Hump kick avoided. Ooh. Spinning kick to the midsection. I felt that one here. Sonny. Oh, coming. springboard. Oh, oh. oh. Wow, landed in a split. Oh, oh man. God. Sonny out in the split, and Helico stomps the knee. Got Sonny locked up. That oh, oh, the Navarro death oh. roll. God. Into that ankle lock. Awesome, awesome and, stuff. And Helico wrenching. On the knees, the ankles, and now hammering down with the heel of his boot. Got to tap out, Sonny. Sonny tap out. forced yeah. to tap out. The winner of this match, There's no shame in tapping out there. You just can't get out. That Navarro death roll, and then he, he locks in an ankle lock while he has it. I mean, forget it. It's done. I mean, it, it is a truth. Maybe three or four in one submission. Attacking both legs, the ankles, and there, the back of the thigh as well. Right after that hamstring, and Helico.
very, very impressive victory here tonight for the submission technician. This is Platinum Max Caster, the best wrestler alive, one half of the acclaimed, and tonight I'm going up against Alex Reynolds from the Dark Order. And Alex, let me take you back a little bit, okay? Let me remind you and everybody else that I beat your little friend, 10, on dynamite, like that. Everybody says he's so big, he's so strong. I stood up right next to him, I'm the same size. Alex, you're dealing with a heavyweight. So I know you're scared. And I know you're gonna have somebody in your corner from the Dark Order. Who's it gonna be? 10, I beat him. Five, everyone beats him. Hangman? Dude, I could beat Hangman with one hand tied behind my back. And my good hand, too. I'll use my left for him. Alex, with your nice little face and your nice little record, you're going up against Platinum Max. My single record, it's impeccable this year. And you know what? I'm gonna have a little extra help out there. My partner, Anthony Bowens, he's back. His knee is getting better, and he's gonna have my back tonight against you and all your little creepy friends. So Alex, Platinum Max is here to make a mark, and you're gonna find out why everyone loves the acclaimed. And that, right there, is a mic drop. Boom. Big Trio's tag team match coming up next as Dark Order's Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, and Colt Cabana collide with Vary Morales, Bill Collier, and D3. Join the Dark Order. This is a Trio's tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making their way to the ring at a total combined weight of 664 pounds. Stu Grayson, Evil Uno, and Colt Boom Boom. Cabana. Taz, the bonds of the Dark Order seem to strengthen, well, grow and strengthen day by day as you see the Meat Man, John Silver, pumping up here. Meat Man, rocking cargo shorts, gigantic arms, triceps, biceps, forearms, the whole deal, Dark Order pose. Quadriceps, quintessence. Quadriceps, pants. <laughs> Their opponents have a total combined weight of 549 pounds, a team of Vare Morales, Bill Collier, and D3. Bill Collier, is, Bill Collier is the very large one for you people out there, fans that want to know. D3, the guy with D3 shaved into his head. That's who that is. <laughs> <laughs> and Vare Morales is Vare with the yep. red uh, bandana Jones. And that's Cole Cabana. Cole Cabana, he's doing uh, the, the old negative one there. Yes, he is. Inspired by the leader of the Dark Order. <laughs> Aubrey Edwards a little <laughs> perplexed there. Galarnovo tie up, Uno. Backing D3 up to the corner. The Prince of Rome. Ooh. Well, I like that there's no back down in, uh, in D3, but you gotta be careful with evil Uno. He is just that, straight evil. Very efficient as uh, using, uh, using his size advantage over his opponents is Evil Uno. You see Stu Grayson, on, he's so eager to get into this match, he was climbing the ropes. He loves to fight. But Evil Uno, um, and Stu Grayson, as you pointed out, Evil Uno, also all of his experience, you know, he, most of the men he's gonna face, he has more experience than, and Back heel trip knows there. how to exploit that. He certainly does. Didn't have more experience when he faced me, though, Tim. Oh, wow. Oh, there you go. He was also like 16 years old. Next count. <laughs> and you went over, you won the match. <laughs> okay. I guess so that's I why you brought it up. <laughs> Actually, no, he beat me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Humble Jones. Cold right, okay. Cabana taking a victory lap there. Evil Uno comes in. Oh! Manhattan drop. And oh, the oh, roll oh, up. Oh. Cover her here. Just a one count, but a stomp on the fingers. Steps through Mahi Strahl. Deep hook there. Didn't uh, Uno was unable to clasp his hands in the S grip. <laughs> <laughs> How do you keep D3 in suspense? <laughs> he did. He, he had it. <laughs> Aubrey not excited about that because it happened right in front of her yeah. face. And Uno saying, "How can you blame me?" It says Evil Uno right in my name. <laughs> Ooh, drop kick. 
D3 explodes. Caught Uno on the ear with that drop kick. Big Bill. Big Bill, bad Bill. Bill Collier. Evil Uno. Set to mix it up here. Barnard will tie up. Collier able to power into that side headlock. Strong headlock with all that height. With all his leverage down on the side of the head. Collier comes in, knocks. Wow. Powerful. Not, yeah, Silver. not, not yeah. so often you see Uno get knocked back like that Cabana. I talked about the, the bonds of the Dark Order. Cabana not taken too kindly to seeing his partner, Evil Uno. Cole Cabana going out there doing his best, Reg Polk. <laughs> People are Googling that yeah. right now. <laughs> oh. But Stu Grayson always loves to mix it up with a larger opponent. He does. He loves the challenge, does Grayson. Collier. Ooh. Ooh. Punch right to the Uno. Push. Yeah. yeah. Big digging uppercut there. Hammer throw into the corner. Stu gets the boot up. Uh-oh, got caught. Collier got him. And Collier not even... Jeez, how wow, strong just deadlifting is this Stu oh Grayson. That's a monster. That's power. That's hard to do in midair, man. That is raw power right there by Bill Collier. Oh, headbutt. Rattled a little bit. Grayson, no. Reversal. Duck the head. Wow, the athleticism right there. Swing and a miss there by Collier. Grayson comes off. Corkscrew uppercut there. Vary Morales comes in, able to avoid contact the first time, but not the second. Uh oh, uh oh. Grayson just muscles Morales over to the corner. Bags out to Cole Cabana. Morales. Morales got himself out of that corner. That was well done yeah, by Vary. Did the smart thing there. Now Morales. This would be a, a, a speed versus power matchup. Guy in my neighborhood had a cousin. His name was Vari. You know what we called him? Vinny. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Let's <laughs> call him Vinny. Okay. Vinny Morales. Nice. Flying man. <laughs> <laughs> Leapfrog there by Morales. Cabana, Whoa, though. Oh, Cabana. Cartwheels through. Let's Morales. Knee out. Watch out. Launches off the middle rope. Little Tierras there up on the shoulders of Cabana. Oh! oh. Cabana using Morales' eagerness against him. I should say over eagerness. Tags out. And now delayed vertical suplex there by Evil Uno. Stepping on the hair, keeping Morales in place. Yeah, you're not going nowhere with someone stepping on your long hair. Stu Grayson. Frog splash from just not even off the ropes, just running and just straight up frog splash. A lot of force coming down across the midsection of Ari Morales. Uno and Stu, they are the longest tenured tag team of Dark Order, and they are so highly efficient. Big body slam there by Cabana. Morales hit that mad. All of Dark Order went up in the air. Like, Valerie was like 360 pounds. Looking for the flying apple was Cabana, but nobody home. Uh-oh, big Bill. Bill Collier. Tags and Cabana sent face first in that top turnbuckle pad. Ooh. Right hand by Collier, but Cabana firing back. Oh, he's looking for the tag, but Collier just muscled him back to the corner. Yeah, good job by Collier. Here comes D3 now. Oh, he mocked. Look at him mocking. Oh, that was that little mock that D3 did hurt him. Tag out to Morales. D3 looking like D5 here. <laughs> Morales there. <laughs> Big clothesline in the corner. I get it. <laughs> oh, oh. flying apple! Great counter move there by Cabana. Flying ass move. Flying apple. That's why we call it the apple. Right, we don't see, he's see from the Chicago, apple. not New York. New York's the big apple, bro. Chicago guy. It's the flying apple, not the big I, apple. I understand. You think he is Mace Aruga? <laughs> oh, watch out. Belly to belly. Morales thrown over the top. Stu Grayson. Boots and chopping a right hand. Powerful right hand. Oh, you're a Nagi. Oh, my God. He was nothing. Tremendous power there from Stu Grayson, Taz. Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, Collier's a lot larger than Stu, and Stu does not care. Uh -oh. Man. oh, man. Stu Grayson with Collier up on the shoulders. Stu Grayson looking for nightfall. But Collier 
Oh, tagged in is Uvaluno. Blind tag. Look to the midsection. Nope. Collier was looking for the suplex. Nice count uh -oh. by the dark order. We might be done here. Assisted soon. flatliner there. Oh boy. Morales popped up. Grayson holding on the power bomb. Morales flattened. D3, it's your turn. Whoa, look at that. Watch out. Big right hand to the jaw. The back flipping kick. And Cabana in position. Looking, perhaps for the Chicago skyline. Exactly, was looking for the big old Chicago skyline show. Oh, Chicago! Oh, 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 oh. Wow, man, oh man, a uh, vicious, be. vicious landing. No way to this match. order. Taz, I know we've got a lot of great teams here in AEW, but is there anybody tougher to beat? than Dark Order when they are putting on a united front. I, I don't think that, listen, it's, no, there's not. To answer you with a quick answer, no, I mean, that, I, they got everything, size, speed, experience, intensity, rage. Look at the Chicago skyline, D3 almost got his head knocked off. Colt Cabana, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson, victorious here tonight on AEW Dark Order. Two-thirds of Jurassic Express, Luchasaurus and Marco Stunt in tag team action coming up next. This is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring, the team of Marco Stunt and Luchasaurus. It has a very interesting configuration here for Jurassic Express. Hold on, hold on. Jungle life. What, what, what's the next? Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Jungle life. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. It's the best part. You know oh, the I'm early. <laughs> yeah, you are. I love the trumpets. Well, let's let the music play. Oh, oh. Twenty-seven pounds, a team of Adam Priest and KC Navarro. Here we go. Here's the best part. You know, we actually get charged twice as much when you sing along. <laughs> <laughs> it's a penalty. It's they're penalized. <laughs> it's our flag. Yeah, the jungle life people. Ba -ba -ba. Give it about up, give it about up. I get the words down. I got the Look at that, Marco stuck with the chain on. Who does he think he is, Max Caster? <laughs> like Travolta in 78. I had a 78 Travolta. <laughs> KC Navarro looking like Arnold, but different. <laughs> <I'm> happy days. <laughs> Mark, oh, Mark oh, wow. brought yeah. down to size by Casey Navarro here. Casey's in good shape, though. Yeah, Casey, a lot of speed, a lot of explosivity. But the same can be said for Marco. Man, I should have done that bottom rope stuff back in the day. It's good stuff. Oh, stinging. NZ Geary there. Now Adam Priest comes in. Look at this. Marco stuck whoa, with the Sierra. Whoa, 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 whoa. See that? They should play that while it's happening. Damn, I'm smart. I'm sure somebody out there will sample it. <laughs> Marco stunt diving elbow drop nice to the job. back of Priest. Hooks the far leg. Nice tight pin with that cradle. Well, not a cradle, but Jacqueline's opponent up to the back of his head. I thought he had the head hooked also. And Marco, oh, Marco there. He was reaching out for the tag, but Priest didn't need to see it. He felt the shift in momentum. And he was able to take advantage of Marco stunt there. Great instincts being shown by Adam Priest. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Get, get the big man in. There you go. Good time to tag him in. And now Lucha so <laughs> Casey Navarro and Anna Priest. Navarro. Oh. Oh. I love Casey's exuberance. We're about to see it get splatted in the ring. Double choke slam there from Luchasaurus. And a double cover here. One, two. Wow. Here are your winners Marco Stunt and Luchasaurus. 
Well, Taz, Jurassic Express not getting paid by the minute. Nothing wrong with that. Set him up, knock him down, see you next week type thing. Look at this, ba boom. Tremendous power being shown there by Luchasaurus. And Marco Stunt and Luchasaurus victorious here tonight in tag team action. Let's just lay out for it, Tess. It's impossible. Oh! Yeah, things looking real good here, Butch. You're getting the job done. Keep it up, huh? Why can't I get in? Hey, you know the rules. Go get yourself a jacket. Putting it all on black. Uh, I'm a stats man myself, and the stats say we should put it on red. <laughs> We're the Dark Order. Are you ready to play? <laughs> I'm ready to win. Coming up next, action in the women's division as Diamante goes one-on-one -on -one with Vipress. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the 305, Diamante! Taz, this is poised to be a tough physical affair between Diamante and her opponent, Vipress. Well, Diamante well documented how physical she is, how intense she is. One of the most fearsome female competitors on the AEW roster, there's no doubt about that. Her opponent from Los Angeles, California, Vipress. Vipress looking on very stoically, not impressed by Diamante's accomplish accomplishments here in AEW. Perhaps she accomplished to say the word accomplishments correctly. Well, you accomplished it. I did. Uh, I will tell you this. I mean, that's if you're Vipress, that's what you want to do, right? You never want to, you never want to sweat nobody. And if you do, you don't want them to know it, especially before the ding, ding, ding. Yeah, keeping a strong poker face is so important, especially Ooh. with somebody like Diamante who thrives on intimidating her opponent. Absolutely, she sees any weakness, she's gonna zone in, and Diamante zoned in with those forearms. Ooh. Look at that, Diamante went to uh, to start talking some trash. Vipress returned fire with some shots of her own. Oh, that's reverse. Reversal into the ropes. Vipress gets the head of her. And oh, wow, Northern Lights suplex, looking to make a quick end of it here. Yeah, quick Northern Lights right there. Caught think, Diamante uh, uh, sleeping a little she bit She did, there. I think uh, Vipress, you know, <laughs> Basically said, listen, I'm here. You're not walking all over me. And that was impressive. Nice throw right there by uh, Vipress. Diamante, quick drop step, getting behind Vipress. Vipress, though, picks the ankle and follows up with a stomp to the chest. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Grinding her boot into the face of Diamante. Well, besides Diamante, there's another lady in that ring with a mean streak, and it's Vipress. A little short shoot action there. Watch out, up and over. No, maybe not. Oh, the Tierras. Ooh, oh. mule kick. From Diamante, Vipress is rattled, and the drop kick sends her back into the corner. Yeah, watch out now. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Great Diam extension in the legs of Diamante there. That's uh, uh, so what I was going to say. Cover here. Two great, uh, great launch by yeah. Diamante. She covered a lot of ground. Recoil, right? She recoiled her legs at the right time, and that's to get maximum impact. Oh, look at that. Vipress send Diamante to the outside. Well, this could be the opening that Vipress needs. She needs to get on a hop, get out there, and do something as fast as possible, in my opinion. Oh, the uh -oh. caught. Oh, ho, 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 Vipress ah. gets the leg swept out. Rough landing for her. 
And uh, we've talked about it a lot. Oh, how hard the ring apron is and that steel guardrail under that covering. Yeah, so much, so much danger, so many uh, awkward angles outside of the ring. So much potential for injury, but right here, Diamante looking to cover. And as a wrestler, you know, you, you think of those harder surfaces around the ringside area that you could utilize to hurt your opponent. It's This is not, a, you know, a fun game. It's a violent game, and Diamante, she's got that checked off. Diamante peppering Vipress with elbow strikes there. Heads in, the Casadora. Diamante lands on her feet. Ooh, back elbow. Staggers Vipress, swing and a miss. Oh, caught her with the comebacker. Yeah, beautiful job with that short line. Lit up Vipress and another one. A second one. Maybe Diamante looking for a third. Yeah, dropped her. And every one of those is insane impact. Maybe she's going straight jacket. Maybe oh, not. wow. Yeah. Has the arm captured, the body scissored. Great submission. And look at this, Viper is forced to tap out. The winner of this match, Diamante. Excellent job by Diamante. Dominant. Dominant performance indeed, Taz. Impressive submission victory for Diamante here tonight. Representing Team Taz, Powerhouse Hobbs, Brian Cage, and Ricky Starks with Hook in their corner in trios tag team action coming up next. This is a trios tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Hook at a combined weight of 740 pounds. The team of Powerhouse Hobbs, Absolute Ricky Starks and the machine, Brian Cage. Taz, we spoke about it a bit at the top of the show. Seems to be a little little strife, a little uncertainty in uh, no. FTW world, as it's called. Hey, listen, my friend, we saw it on Doc. I said it myself, along with every member of Team Taz. Everything is fine, everything is good. Onward and upward, like I said uh, earlier, this is gonna be great. Their opponents at a combined weight of 570 pounds, a team of Jake St. Patrick, Sage Scott, and Chandler Hopkins. Look at that three dead men right there, ladies and gentlemen. Three dead men, it's happening. Chandler Hopkins there in the hat. Jake St. Patrick on the, uh, the far right side of your screen. Sage Scott in the center. I just want to say this, every great team has had some hiccups here and there, had some disagreements, it happens. And it happened to us, and it's done, and we're good. It happens, and that's that's part of being great. Not always being on the same page, but at the end of the day, getting victories. Absolute Ricky Starks starting off for Team Taz with Jake St. Patrick of the opposition in the ring. Well, you deal with someone like Absolute Ricky Starks, he is just a... Uh, 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 a tremendous athlete, we know it's well documented, a tremendous personality in general. Uh, he's an amazing, amazing, a future world heavyweight champion in my, my professional opinion. Could be a future FTW champion. Well, Brian Cage is the FTW world heavyweight champion, but uh, yeah, you know, right now, right now we gotta see if St. Patrick here, if he can deal with someone like Ricky Starks, which I doubt. Taz, I, you know, I don't mean to upset the apple cart here, but who do you like in a fight between Cage and Starks? I, I would never think those two men would fight. I mean, they would just, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, at Revolution, the street fight, they were a, a, a tremendous tag team, and we came up a little short. I understand that, but no, yeah, so uh, I, I don't look at them fighting ever. Well, but, but Taz, I mean, you've been a part of some pretty pretty notable tag teams in, in your experience. Yeah, I'm a, world, I'm a former world tag team champion. I'm multiple teams. What's your point? But you always got to oh. take the measure of your partner. It's like, could, could I take him if I needed to? No, it, it, it's not like that with Stalks and Cage. It's not like that with Hobbs or Hook. We are family. That's how we work. That's right. how we are. Sage Scott. Uh, oh. yeah, look at how smart Ricky is grabbing, grabbing my man's ponytail right there. There we go. And making the way over to the corner. Tagging into Oh, look at that. Cage had his arm extended, but... Well, yeah, well, well listen, maybe it was time for Hobbs to come in. I mean, I, all three of these men are ring generals. I mean, so it's no big deal. I mean, Ricky... Uh, Ricky felt like it was time to get Hobbs in there, and it's no big deal. Start. Listen, obviously the big powerhouse, besides powerhouse Hobbs, is Cage. So everything comes within time, and that's how this works. First whip into the corner, powerhouse Hobbs. I don't micromanage these men, dude. I'm not like other people who lead factions around here in this company. Okay, I let my men deal with their stuff. I'll oversee it, but I don't micromanage. Powerhouse Hobbs in control of Sage Scott. Into the corner once again.
again. The spine colliding. Power. Look at her. Power. Fans. Power of hops. With ease. Ooh. Lower back driven into that top buckle. Oh, the trio. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is going to be bad for this man right here. Tree of Joey Lawrence, the tree of Black Rob, whatever you want to call it. Powerhouse Ooh. Hobbs hammering Sage Scott down. Sage is getting himself a haircut because you could use that hair, you know, if need be, and the ref is not going to stop you. Hey, keep doing it. Part yeah. of a uniform, right? Like a football jersey. Well, I mean, unless you have a pro prolonged grip on it. Right. You know, that's. Uh, but Hobbs, yeah, Hobbs did nothing. He didn't need the Ricky earlier. Hobbs bringing Sage Scott back up to his feet. Jawbreaker, though. Testing right. the chin of Powerhouse Hobbs. Oh, his chin's like granite. Hobbs' chin is like granite. Oh! oh. Enzi Geary has Hobbs staggered a little bit. Well, he went for some palm strikes and some kicks, and it's not really affecting the Powerhouse. Oh! oh. <laughs> Chandler Hopkins just got <laughs> shut down. Oh, mama! That was sick. Powerhouse Hobbs. He looks like he just hit a wall. He hit something worse. Hobbs. <laughs> he got hit by a dump truck. That's what he got hit by. You're not kidding. Yeah, he's like a, like a, oh boy. Uh-oh. Chandler oh, Hopkins sent to the outside. Looking very unsteady out there. And, and Hook on the outside. Look at that, a gut wrench suplex by Hook. As Hobbs has, has referee Aubrey Edwards' attention diverted. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it happens. Cover here. Oof. St. Patrick in to break things up. Uh-oh. Hobbs sends St. Patrick up and over the top to the outside. It's just wreckage. And that's that, that's just how we do it. It's just wreckage. Chandler Hawkins after getting turned inside out by Team Taz. Oh, look at that. Oh, Starks intercepted the tag. Yeah, I, Cage was, well, he was primed for the tag, and Ricky just, well. Ricky, Ricky, yeah, I'm a little surprised because Cage hasn't been in, and he, well, all right, whatever. Come on, Ricky. Boot to the I mean, men's section. Right. I, I, that could be setting up Hopkins for the little Rochambeau action. And that, wait a minute. Cage tagged himself in. Starks hit the Rochambeau, but yeah, I don't think uh, Starks doesn't. It's not. No big deal. We we got this man dead to rights. It's all it's okay, Ricky. Brian's got it handled. Brian's got it handled. Cage has it. Oh, the drill claw. Cage covers. And Taz, I guess a win is a win. It the is a win. Match, the team of powerhouse Hobbs, absolute Ricky Starks, and the machine, Brian Cage. It's all that matters. That's all that matters. Victory. Victory not, is what matters. Not about the journey, it's about the destination. And Team Taz arriving. A lot of victorious. thumbs up. A lot of thumbs up. It's all good. All right. Take another look back here. This is the end of the night for Chandler Hopkins. Well, I think the end of the night began when Powerhouse <laughs> Hobbs absolutely trucked him and sent him out to a hook on the outside. Yeah, I think you're right. Ah, they look great. My four favorite people in the whole wide world. Way to finish it off, Cage. Good job, buddy. But Taz, I'm not in the ring. Ladies Trios action coming up right now, featuring Red Velvet, Kylie King, and Big Swole. This is a trios tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring, the team of Ashley Vox, Delmi XO, and Vert Vixen. And as Vert Vixen in the middle, Ashley Vox on your left, Delmi XO making her AEW debut here tonight, teaming with her sister, Ashley Vox. They actually have a pretty prominent tag team, Team C Stars. Yeah, two young ladies out of the great state of Rhode Island. The Ocean State. The Ocean State. I told you that. <laughs> I'd be nothing without you. <laughs> I know. I know. And their opponents, the team of Red Velvet, Kylan King, and Big Swole. Before we talk about this tag team trio here, I want to give a special shout out to Kylan King. Got an absolute banger of a match with Rio Mizunami last night. 
on AEW Dark Elevation. Kylan King was not victorious, but excellent has match though, man. Really shown how she has progressed over the last few months here in AEW. Yeah, no, she really has. Credit to King on that for sure. It was a hell of a match with her. I mean, he's he's Nami for sure last night, as you said, on Elevation. We saw last week uh, Big Swole and Red Velvet teaming up together for the first time. They were victorious and. Uh, they looked, uh, looked really good together. They worked very well, which is uh, interesting because, you know, not typically tag team competitors. Right, right, Ex exactly. There you see King, by the way. Nice side headlock takedown on Vox, and then a head scissor, whoa. Vox smart, get out, get out of the way, whatever King was had in mind there. Ashley Vox tagging out to her sister, her younger sister, Delmi Exo. Seeing her first action inside an AEW ring. Squaring off with Big Swole. Swole, one of the most popular competitors here in all elite wrestling. Got a little cravat action going right there by Swole. Sends Delmi Exo for a ride. The uppercut to the back. Yeah, Delmi definitely uh, caught it right in the spine. And Big Swole smart. Keep on her. Oh. Big Swole so heavy handed. Really brings the. Oh, just laid into that shoulder tackle. Yeah, good momentum right there for sure. And that's smart. Well, Dummy went for a drop down. Swole dropped down herself and grabbed the headlock. That's smart. Very smart, very cerebral wrestling here by Big Swole. She's not all power. A anyway, multi dimensional competitor and tagging out to Red Velvet. Red Velvet. Awesome competitor for sure. Nice split right there. Whoa. Ooh, a little bit of a stumble, but still Red Velvet able to hit the leg lariat. There we go. Look at the far leg. A one count there. And see right now Red Velvet body shots right now. Beautiful body shots. Another one. Really winding oh, up. Oh, nice. And notice how Velvet was faking high to draw Delmi Exo's hands up and get the body shots. But well, she's the daughter of a former boxer, as we know. Yeah, Delmi Exo, though, laying in some heavy strikes of her own, but it's the boot of Velvet. But oh, there, oh, oh, wow, oh. tremendous power. Good strength. What's she going to do with her here? And she hoist her oh, boy. up and brings oh. her over. Gut wrench here. Cover hooks the far leg. <laughs> Ashley Vox. And Vert Vixen clearing the opponents off the uh, off the apron as Delmi Exo isolates uh, Red Velvet here inside the ring. Here comes Vox. Oh, Ashley Vox coming in with a hard strike, tagging out Delmi Exo. This is the tag team cohesion of two sisters competing here. Oh, look at this Red Velvet. Nice switch right there. Oof. Oh, Velvet fighting essentially a handicap match here. And makes the desperation tag out to Kylan King. Yeah, Kylan King coming in. Oh, oh, wow, what a shot. Another one. Oh, chops, forearms, everything. Kylan King swinging a miss. Whoa. Delmi Exo slides to the outside, baits in Kylan a King. A little ha ha game here. Watch out. Oh, but Vert Vixen there on the outside takes down King. He pulled her in. And now Delmi Exo returning. Kylan King into the ring, brings her over. Lateral press. Just a one count, though. Yeah, now try to keep, if you can, keep King in your corner. And that's exactly what they're doing. Now Vert Vixen tags herself in. Vert Vixen hammering the spine. Look at. These two competitors just going. teeing off on one another, Taz. They really are. Swinging for the fence as well. Kicks exchange. Oh! oh double roundhouse, double knockdown. Two long-legged ladies. Say that 10 times. They both had the same idea. Well, turning point right here. Who's going to get to the vertical, get to a vertical base first, I should say. Vertical base, or who's going to get the first tag? Well, you're right. No Definitely have an advantage. Yeah. No vertical base needed. And it's Kylan King that made the tag first. Ashley Vox. Oh! Red Velvet. Yeah, just small. some cross chop. Or excuse me, Big Swole with some cross chops. Taking everybody out. Watch out. Ooh, oh, that headbutt. 
just rocked Ashley Vox. Domi Exo escapes out of the uh -oh, way. Uh -oh, uh -oh. oh! Man, oh man. Just spiked Exo high up on the shoulders. That's how you do it. Vox came in to help. Well, <laughs> She be careful. Yeah, charged into the corner. Ate the cutter there from Big Swole. This might be it. Hooks the far leg. Uh, no. Vox able to kick out. Oh, uh, got to tip your cap if you're wearing one to Vox on that kick out. And if you're not, well, you can just say, great job, Big Swole. I can say, go to the closet and get one, and then tip Dude, it. Do that too. Oh! oh! <laughs> Vert Vixen out of nowhere. High flying knee strike until that shot by Kylie King. Oh, oh, this guy, Bryce Rensburg, the ref's got to try to get some control. This is mayhem here. Ashley Vox just had the fish hook on Red Velvet. Rolled her out, hit the big strike. They go to sisters, they're doing the chop, chop, thigh, thigh. <laughs> the Sea Stars, Stereo Tope Suicida. What are, they, what, are they, what are they feeding these girls up in Rhode Island? A lot of fish, actually. <laughs> it's a lot of fish. A lot of lobster rolls, cod, I think. haddock. True, <laughs> this is absolutely broken down, Taz. And look at this, Vert Vixen. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh! Man. We have lost control. Like, I've never done dives when I was a competitor. If I did, it would look just like that. As awesome as that. Go ahead, Vert Vixen. She's all she's, fired up. Yeah. She's doing, she's mocking him with the banging of the thigh thing, the seesaw. She's cheering, her, uh, cheering on her partners. Oh, right. Well, not mocking. I shouldn't say mocking. It's cheering on is what I meant. Oh, but Swole <laughs> using those heavy hands. Ooh. Boot to the midsection on Delmi Exo there. Delmi sent into the ropes. Ashley Fox sends to go. Bandera up and over by her own sister. Uh-oh. Sh shoulder capture. Big Swole turned inside out there. Look at this. Vox is on that top rope, and there's the thighs again. Oh, the assisted senton. But Swole got the knees up. Vert Vixen tagged in, as was Red Velvet. Swing and a miss. Red Velvet. Ooh. And the big corkscrew kick. The chef's kiss from Red Velvet. Oh, drop toe hold. Delmi Exo strung up on the center strand. Oh, knee strike. Wow, what a shot right there. Exo is out ski. Oh, speaking high. about Oxy. Yeah, high, high boot. Ski. Oh, man, the sister got knocked out too, I think. Watch out. Vert Vixen swinging for the fences again. Oh, wait a minute. The roundhouse there from the rolling elbow. Follow up by. Oh, jeez. And the chef's kiss. That was it. The winners of this match, the team of Big Swole, Kylan King, and Red Velvet. Oh, Red Velvet, oh, he's stirring it up. Good victory right there by those three ladies standing tall. This was a back and forth contest, Taz, but ultimately, Kylan King, Big Swole, and Red Velvet were victorious. Yeah, lots of knockout shouts, shots in the house, and now, we're all getting down, doing dance, all sorts of crazy dance. I love dancing, bro. I go to weddings. I'm a hoot. You got to see me, bro. Back you know when you could go to weddings, I used to dance like crazy. You were dancing back in the announcer's dressing room. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, during downtime, when I'm not show prep. A storm uh -oh. <laughs> is coming. Well, last week on Dynamite, Jade Cargill had some Whoa. very pointed words for Red Velvet. And Velvet having to be restrained by her partners here. Yeah, no back down at all from Velvet, but I'll tell you what, be careful when you try to get up in the grill of Jay Cargill. The short time we've seen her in AEW, she is no joke, that lady right there. Red Velvet and Jade Cargill on a collision course here in all elite wrestling. In the battle of the Michaels, Mike Magnum takes on Michael Naka, Naka, Nakazawa coming up next on Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Michael From Nakazawa. the desk of Kenny Omega, weighing 203 pounds, M.T. Nakazawa. M. 
Wait a minute. MT. Not, okay, I see. Michael Nakazawa. This is the a, apple, too. This is his administrative role in the Kenny Omega organization. Placed in that role by Don Callis. Nakazawa, you can see more, very much more professional demeanor than we've seen out of him in the past. Yeah, which is refreshing because of his history. In his the opponent ring. from Long Island, New York, weighing 233 pounds, Mike Magno. Magno making his return here to AEW. Big athlete, Magnum, definitely a big man. Big athlete with a big chance to pick up his first career victory here. It's interesting here. Nakazawa keeping the headset on. Keeping the headset on and the lanyard. The lanyard around the neck. Oh. Somebody's, somebody's talking. Talk. Yeah, I know the feeling. Give me five. Give me five minutes. Is he talking? Yeah. He's probably Callis? talking. I'm probably Kenny O'Malley. Yeah, I'm on the ring. Yeah, my match has started. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Let's go. Come on. Go. <laughs> no, but he, he has all sorts of offices and everything. Oh, he has cool. all sorts of headsets. Oh, no, but, oh. Look at this, Nakazawa. Once again, it's like taking a call in the middle of the match, Dad. He's trying to take care of business. You know, empty yeah. Nakazawa. But Mike Magnum. Yeah, Magnum, I don't blame him. Yeah, enough of it. I'm taking this disrespect line down. Oh, whoa, what the hell? The Areola controller Stole by Michael Stole my bit. Stole my bit. Watch out. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss by Magnum. And oh! Nice stuff by Magnum. Oh, watch out, watch by out, Nakazawa. watch out. Got him rolled up. That damn headset got in the way. Nakazawa got all locked up there. What the hell? <laughs> Snapmare here. I'm have to get it. I'll tell you what. Got to get a new headset. <laughs> she whiz. Oof. Oh, whoa. What? Magnum's got oh, him. Look at this cover here. Wow. Good job, though, by Magnum. He's more concerned with the look. <laughs> He's getting his ass kicked. He's worried about the lanyard and the headset. Well, he's not going to let him backstage if he doesn't have it That's on. That's true. Like, we don't know who he is. It's the guy spraying oil over himself on a regular basis. Mike Magnum headed up to the top rope of Nakazawa. Ah, the vibration on the ropes. The old run to the rope. Guy loses balance. That works most of the times. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's... The head tie slide by Nakazawa, also known as the yam bag scratcher Rooney. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Running elbow strike cover here. Two. He broke. He Whoa. completely broke his headset. It is. I, that it that is headset. Intense. That might be the strongest headset in history. No, no, it's broken. It's like, it's he's <laughs> struggling. He's, oh, he's, a, a, he's he having a hard match. He's having a hard match with the headset on Magnum. <laughs> and look, he's trying to. That's definitely illegal, by the way. Totally illegal. That's why Posey's trying to stop it. But I think <laughs> that's <laughs> a cavalcade of incompetence here. What? Mike Posey choking out Nakazawa. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, okay, he's a take it. Oh, Mike Magnum. Oh. DDT. Oh, buddy. He just spiked Nakazawa. And Mike Magnum going to paint himself a little masterpiece here. Indeed. That was actually somebody else. Yes. Yes. I know. I know. Very well. Ooh. Kicks to the midsection. Oh, 15 years. Watch out. Hold on. <laughs> Ooh, there's a good close up view. And oof. Neck breaker there by Mike Magnum. He's got a chance here. Inside leg hooked, but just a two count. Hey, this Magnum. You know, there's a lot of tomfoolery going on with Nakazawa in his new office position. It's actually Magnum, Mike, Mike Foolery. Yeah, Mike Foolery. Good point. There's a part of the headset on the mat there. All right, here we go. Nakazawa grabbing onto the top rope. Magnum trying to get the fireman's kit. Oh, just dropped him very unceremoniously there. Nakazawa. Oh, look oh, at that. Oh, Mike. laptop. Oh! oh! Wow. Jeez. A laptop shot. <laughs> That's got to be a 15-inch laptop. Maybe 14. Could be a 16. Well, they make the big ones now. Might have been a 12 or a 17. Literally could have been any size, Taz. Absolutely. There's no way to know. <laughs> and oh, man. Magnum's in grave danger right now. And he's got... Oh, no. The... Oh, just... Covers here. Two, three. Michael Nakazawa. The winner of this match, M.T. Nakazawa. Taz, I think Nakazawa might have been inspired by Kenny Omega and Don Callis' performance 
on Dynamite a few weeks back with that yeah. finishing move. Yes, I think you might be right. It was a sickening display the first time. It was even worse the second time. Michael Nakazawa. Nakazawa. Yeah. Congratulations. With a victory here tonight. And Brother, you got to get a new one. Yeah, that's done. That's it. You got to talk to Kenny Omega and Don. And that's a good chance the laptop might be broke, too. Well, getting warmed up for Arcade Anarchy is Miro and Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford in their corner. This is a tag team bout set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Penelope Ford at a combined weight of 468 pounds, the team of super bad Kip Sabian and Miro. Taz tomorrow night on Dynamite, 8, 7 Central on TNT, Arcade Anarchy. And Miro looks focused. He looks fired up. Yeah, I cannot wait to see that matchup. I, I've never seen nothing like it. I can't wait to see it. And how uh, Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy can deal with that monster right there and Kip Sabian in Arcade Anarchy. Their opponents at a combined weight of 424 pounds, the team of John Schuyler and Baron Black. Baron Black and John Schuyler with an opportunity here, but if, oh, if I this, have... Look at this. They were right in the face of Baron Black on the outside. Miro, tell Baron Black to... Just, oh! Just hammering yeah, Baron. You don't want to piss off Miro, especially right before Arcade Anarchy, you know? Ooh! God, I wasted my time! All of you wasted my time! And this, this Arcade Anarchy match, Taz, this was something that, that Miro didn't want. He said they've already beaten Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy. They have nothing left to prove. Miro wants to win championships here in AEW, but Kip Sabian demanded it because of how, what happened at his wedding with Penelope Ford. Yeah, absolutely, and that's understandable. I get it, but I also get Miro's point too, but which makes tomorrow night Arcade Anarchy even more important to, to basically watch it because it's going to be something crazy, so I can't wait to see it. And right now, Miro, I mean, who, who does not want to see this guy in action? He is just, not to use a cliche, but a force to be reckoned with, man. And Miro, I mean, we've seen him thus far in AEW undefeated, but every time he comes out, he has an intensity about him, but now it's it seems to have ratcheted up to heretofore unknown Kip, levels. Kip's just hanging out talking to Penelope. Letting Miro do all the hard work, but Miro making the hard work look easy, Taz. Yeah, no, I know, and I, I think John Scala probably would like it if maybe Kip got tagged in, because <laughs> like I said earlier, who the hell wants to deal with that right there? Miro has made it clear. His focus here in AEW is to win championships, to be recognized as a singles competitor, to be recognized as the best man. And right now, it's it's basically John Skyler going here one-on-one, -on -one more or less, even though it's a tag match against Miro. And Skyler, no back down in him. Look at him. Look at that. Miro just eating those chops for lunch. Skyler hangs on to the middle rope. Miro. There's a handful of hair guillotined over the top rope. Very good. <laughs> oh! Good. coming back here. You got to be careful now if you're Miro and Kip's just hanging out with Penelope. Yeah, this could be something of a, of a trap game for Miro and, and Kip. Sure, they could definitely be looking past any opponent. Watch out. This is bad. Oh! Well, maybe not looking past. Might be looking through. The backdrop planting Skyler on the back of his head. Very unsteady on his feet. Baron Black nowhere to be found as Miro. Oh. The leaping thrust kick. I think Skyler is done. Baron Black was thrown over the guardrail earlier, basically knocked out on the outside. And Miro, a crazed look on his face. And this. Game over. <laughs> Is the end of the night for Skyler. Tapping out immediately as Miro is 
cranking back the winners of this match. Over. The team of Kip Sabian and Miro. Arcade Anarchy, man, tomorrow night. Dude, he basically just said, Miro just said it's going to eat Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy's organs. Basically said. Arcade Anarchy, part of a massive edition of AEW Dynamite. Tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. You can't afford to miss it. And next, the Dark Orders, Alex Reynolds takes on one half of the acclaimed Platinum Max Caster. Join the Dark Order. The following contest is set for one fall of the 20 minute time limit. Making his way to the ring from Long Island, New York, weighing 196 pounds, Alex Reynolds. Taz, as you mentioned, a rare singles appearance here for Alex Reynolds. Typically teaming with uh, John Silver, or actually, I mean, as of late, we've seen a lot of variety in, yeah. the, in the teams from Dark Order. Yeah, that, any configuration is John Silver, the meat man himself. Any configuration as of late with the Dark Order, and they have been straight deadly, man. We will see how Reynolds able to fare in singles action in just a few moments. train and, and how, uh, well, years ago, I should say, how it all happened with Phil Caster and what Reynolds helping as far as assisting training him. At CAP. That's right. Great, Great pro. pro there. In Hicksville, New York, on Long Island, Nassau County. So, uh, great school there. But right now, it's not about training. It's these both men are both accomplished pro wrestlers that signed contracts here in AEW. They're big stars. And it's about wins here, wins and losses. Wins matter, as we know here at AEW. Wait, you got a contract? They just told me to show up. I got one, yes, I just got it. Max Caster, grabbing a handful of hair. Reynolds. Well, Caster, you know, as you know, it's Calvin. He will, he'll rent some space in your head. He'll mess with you, call your names. It's nice to see Bowen's back. It's come back from the injury, the knee. Yeah, Bowen's uh, still not cleared for competition though he's uh back good to see him back at ringside despite the fact that he is uh, uh an agitator we shall say well he is i mean that's kind of what the acclaim's all about like i said rent space in your head they mess with you verbally just caster will roast you caster into that side headlock reynolds oh look at that hanging out to the hair of reynolds grabs the wrist but reynolds Oof. turn about his fair play Wing blocked there. Ooh. And an uppercut, two consecutive uppercuts. Nice job. Three has Caster rattled here. Swip into the ropes, reversed. Reynolds holds on to the top. Dropped to hold. Oh. 
He's got him right where he needs him here. Look at Reynolds. Oh. Leaps in with that drop kick from the floor. Now Alex Reynolds heads up to the top. He can fly a bit. Watch out. Reynolds diving cross body. Got all of that too. Yeah, you see Caster in a hard yeah. way. Might have hit his own sternum, might have got hit or something, or his arm. I don't know what something he might have hurt himself a little bit there, Reynolds. Yeah, you see Reynolds. Uh, he was holding on to that, that left wrist. Swing and a miss there. Oh! Clothesline, but you can see Reynolds still holding on very tightly to that left arm. Yeah, he, he did something maybe to his forearm or to his wrist. Oh, oh watch out. Oh, no! It's the thing with someone like Caster, he's going to see that you have some sort of an injury and like a blood, I'm sorry, like a shark smelling blood in water, I should say. He's going to zone in on it. Oh, just a stomp to the chest after working over that left wrist. You see Caster immediately going back to it. Reynolds. Yeah, you strong. saw it. You saw the desperation on Reynolds' face. He's trying to break Caster's grip. Look, you know, it's happened to me. I'm sure in your career it's happened to you. When you, you get hurt, you you try to hide it from your opponent. Oh, then, oh, then you get caught. That top wrist lock just driving it down too. You know what I mean? You try to hide it, yeah. and, then, and then next you know your opponent spots it. And it's the poker face. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, it's sometimes you know you, your body just your face just betrays you. You, right. know, you try to you try to set your jaw. You try to in my life. <laughs> Right elbow though, an aggressive right elbow from Reynolds dropping Caster down, but Caster. Oh, ankle pick right there. Leg dive ankle pick. And, and now just works the arm now harder. He's got the arm of Reynolds hammer locked. And almost a, uh, a grounded camel clutch. He's got that arm. Well, he had the arm hammer locked using the knee, but Reynolds knew that, and he got up to it to his butt to break the hammer lock because he knew. You could feel when someone's not holding your wrist. He knew that Caster's knee was holding the wrist in place for the Hamelon. Irish whip reversed. Caster telegraphed it. Got caught with a kick. Reynolds, see, hold, hold that arm so close to his body. It could be a forearm or a wrist injury or something. It's not his bicep, though. Swing and a mid. Oh! <laughs> Backbreaker there by Caster on the knee. Look at this. Got that just got a beautiful hold here. It's just basically an inverted top wrist lock, a version of a key lock. And he's sitting on the, the lower back of Reynolds to, to prevent him from getting over to the ropes. And Reynolds making a desperate dive to get to that bottom rope. Caster making full use of that five count. Yeah, great job by Max Caster. The meat man's on the outside. He's got his eye, he's keeping his eye on Bowens and vice versa. The boot across the jaw. Alex Reynolds, Caster. What a smile, handsome devil Caster. Look at you. He smiles because he knows that he's got Reynolds in a very precarious position here. Sure does. Didn't QT get the hair fixed? I'm just saying, he ripped QT. Caster did on the wrap. That was stiff. <laughs> anyway. Look at this. Just Talk wrap. about hair. He's yeah. trying to rip the hair out of the head of Reynolds. Really tight grip with Reynolds. Right hand to the midsection, another right hand. But Caster immediately seizing on to the left of Reynolds. Reynolds, though, rolls through. Ooh. Boot to the jaw. Caster in trouble. Nice clothesline. Reynolds, oh, gets reversed into the corner. Nobody home, though. Watch Reynolds out. Running in, back elbow. It's the ropes, another diving back elbow, that time with a twist. Caster in trouble here. Reynolds elevates with a drop kick, kips up. Reynolds is cooking. Alex Reynolds looking great here despite the injury to that left arm. Looked like Caster wanted to throw a clothesline and he kind of te telegraphed it by accident and got caught. Flipping neckbreaker there. One, two. Just a two count there for Alex Reynolds. And Caster, you, you, you heard him there calling out to Anthony Bowens. He's looking for a tag, but this is not the venue for that. Alex Reynolds in control right now. But still having a problem with the left arm is Reynolds. Good for a suplex, perhaps fisherman suplex. 
but you saw Caster very easily Ooh. able to break the grip of Reynolds, yeah. driving him down shoulder first. Probably, and, oh! probably not a good idea by Reynolds trying to do any kind of a, a cradling type of situation when you're all messed up like this here. Reynolds escapes out from underneath. He's got Caster all tied up. One, two, no. Almost got the win right there. Swing and a miss there again by Caster. O'Connor roll. Reynolds is sitting back. He gets knocked out, but oh look, goes back in the O'Connor roll. Rolled up. Caster all the way through. Caster sits down. Oh, look at that. Very last second. Reynolds get his shoulder off, off the mat. Popped up. Oh, the knee caught Caster on the way down. What a shot. Good gosh. And Caster instinctively rolling to the rope. That hand, One, his hands under two. the rope. Is oh, hit. look at, oh, did you see that, Bowens? I did, but I think the left hand, well, no, the depth perception looked like his hand was under the uh, bottom rope. But it was but Anthony Bowens, Bowens yeah, that yeah. put placed the left boot of Caster on that bottom rope. Reynolds, oh, oh. salt press, nobody home. Damn. He was looking for Oof. that big home run shot. Watch the uh, boombox city here, watch out. And, and Anthony Bowens has referee Frank Gasno's attention diverted. What a meat man. Silver taking the boombox out of the hand. And, uh, Silver and Reynolds very nearly a meeting of the minds, but oh, the chain! All sorts of paraphernalia in this thing. The chain wrapped around the fist of Max Caster. Just dropped Alex Reynolds. Chain is gigantic. And now Caster up to the top. The mic drop. Caster hooks the far leg and gets the win. The winner of this match, Platinum Max Caster. What a battle. What a battle right there. And John Silver, obviously incensed after seeing his friend get dropped. Max Caster picked up the victory courtesy of that chain right there to the jaw of Reynolds and then followed it up with a mic drop. Yeah, took advantage of referee being distracted. Oldest trick in the book, still works. And it certainly sounds like Max Caster's business with the Dark Order is far from over with. Well, thank you everyone for joining us here tonight on AEW Dark tomorrow night. 8, 7 central on TNT. It will be AEW Dynamite. We have a great night of action in store for you. So thank you once again for joining us. Good night, everybody.